Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm the Director of Content and Community Relations for Aliso. And my husband, Dan, will be filming us today. This is the first time he's ever done this, so let's hope it goes well. It will be very informal, um, but hopefully I'll show you some fun projects that you can do with your kids or your grandchildren. We're going to be talking about how quilts can help us um, with some basic math skills, learn about color, um, solids, and prints, and a little bit of geometry as well. This quilt was made by Marcy Warren Elmer, and she did it with an um, 18 degree wedge. So you can see how that mimics the shape. Um, and then she put a strip in between each one. You can also talk about uh, warm colors and cool colors. We can talk to the kids about complementary colors. And it's just a wealth of information. So let's get started. So I'm here at my workstation. I have my wool pressing pad and my Liso mini project iron, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later on while we're using it. And I have my rotary mat and all the supplies that I need. We're going to be making this little block. This block is going to be an educational tool to teach um, kids or your grandchildren, um, colors, numbers, shapes, etc. And I have all my supplies. So let's take a look, a little closer look at this block. As you can see, there's four blocks and you can talk to the kids about making a square. So this block shows there's one piece and then you cut on the diagonal and you have two triangles, so it's two pieces. This has three pieces and this one has four. So you're talking about shapes and numbers. The other thing you can mention if you use a novelty print is here's a little cow. You can talk about where do cows come from. They come from barns. And what do cows eat? They eat grass. And where's the grass? It's green. And here's that. And how does grass grow? It grows from sunshine. And sunshine is what color? Let's see, it's yellow. And here that is right here. So you can talk about colors and shapes. You can make up a story. Um, and it's pretty limitless. And for the older kids, as we get further into the shapes and the degrees, um, they'll do a little bit more geometry and math. So we can get started right here. I have a 12 and a half inch square as my base and some really pretty fabrics that I cut in a five and a half inch square. And I'm also using, this is a fusible web that's paper backed. So the shiny side is the fusible side and the paper backing is the side that you will be facing up and you'll be drawing on. So I'm going to go over to our pressing mat and you're going to put the shiny side down and we're going to turn our iron on and let it get heated up. So while we're doing that, I'm going to show you a few other things. Here's some of the shapes that I've already cut out. And it has the paper backing on it. And you can start playing around with these. And the kids will try to figure out how they work, how does it go. They might take a few tries and that will be the fun of it. It's almost just like a puzzle. This one will have just two. And then we can always do one with four. And then we could have a solid one here. So it mimics the one that we already did. Okay, so when we're working with our fusible web, we wanna go according to the manufacturer's instructions, which is usually a dry iron, and you wanna let it sit a few seconds in each spot. And then if at all possible, whenever using fusibles, you always wanna press from the opposite side to get a nice adhesion.
So you're gonna let this cool off. And if you're working with older kids or adults, you can use your rotary cutter or a pair of scissors. And you wanna trim that up. I don't know if you can hear my kitty crying from the other side of the door. I might have to go let her in. <laughs> and then you want to take a ruler a little bit bigger than your square. And this is, you're going to get all your triangles. So you can draw it diagonally from each side. So that would be two triangles here. And then you could cut again. And you could keep going on and on. So you could make the puzzle even more intricate. So now that we have our puzzle, kind of, whoops, I can show you how we'll iron these on. So the paper is on the back and you want to just crack it like this and gently peel off. And the plastic on the back, the fusible, is a little bit sticky so it's going to stick to your background. So you would do this to all of the pieces and like we did before. And if you have someone that sews in your family, you can actually have them top stitch this later and you can save it as a quilt block or make a little pillow out of it. You could also do this with all solids, especially if you have um, really little kids and you wanna really help them learn their colors. Okay. And you can use all different shapes. If you're a quilter, you'll have a lot of templates with different shapes. Here we have hexagons. We could do those. Or you could have the kids try to figure out um, what other shapes a triangle can make. So you want to make sure you do it from both sides. And there, it's finished. So now we have two blocks. So you can see you could start making, actually making a quilt. One of the things that I mentioned is um, if you take two triangles, you can actually make a parallelogram. So there's all kinds of things that you can have the kids do as far as math is concerned. You can have them start measuring how much the distance is in between, like you're sashing on a quilt. One of the other things that I did is I cut the square into equal parts and I got four squares and I arranged them to form the letter E just because that was an easy one. <laughs> but you could have the kids try to figure out um, to do their name or spell out the alphabet and that could be a really fun activity as well. I have another, this gets a little more intricate. This is a, six, a uh, 45 degree diamond. Um, so, and this will form a star. So one of the things that you could do is you could have the kids guess 
Um, how many diamonds do you think it will take to make a star? Is it six? Is it eight? Is it 10? And then if they're a little bit older, you could have them do the math first. So how many 45 degree diamonds will it take to make a complete circle? And it used eight. So it's really pretty with the background. So as you can see, you can really get as complicated or as simple as you would like. Um, and if you want the kids to do maybe this on their own and you don't want them to use an iron or you don't have any fabric, you can do this with paper. So um, I cut the square, it's a four and a half inch square out of paper, and I drew on the back just like I did our fabric. And then I reconnected them together with a glue stick. So this is one of the things that you can do with the kids. So if they're younger, you can tell them that the pieces will make a square and you can ask them to kind of figure out how they would do that on their own. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it on my own. <laughs> one there and one there and then you could just glue it down and then if the kids are a little bit older and you don't want to give him that clue you can just give them the pieces and tell them they need to make a shape so I think that you know there's a lot of different things that they can do so we've learned about geometry and um, you have to multiply and divide to figure out your quilt squares and um, it's just a lot of fun too. So um, I hope that this, you know, was um, some fun ideas that you can do. They're really quick and easy. As I said, you can use um, a fusible with an iron on, you can use paper. You can also cut out um, cereal boxes or the front covers and back covers of magazines are a little bit thicker. So there's a lot of different things that you can recycle. Um, the Aliso Mini Project Iron is um, great for small projects. It's really hot. It gets as hot as our large iron, large iron, and it doesn't have an auto shut off, but it has a really great diamond coated ceramic plate. Um, so if you're working with fusibles and you get a little bit on, it's very easy cleanup. Um, but you can learn more about that on our website. But as I said, any household iron will do or paper and a glue stick. Thank you.